is Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number six from the January 2024 International A Level LXL Pure Mathematics P2 paper. And this is from January 2024. We have a question about the topic of logarithms, which seems to be one of those alien topics which many students seem to have issues with. Um, in you know, they, they start doing things which make no mathematical sense, mainly because they do not understand the basis of logarithms. So I'm going to link you to a video. A card will appear somewhere in the top of the screen here, which will show you um, some of the basics, explain some of the basics of logarithms, so you can understand it in a bit more of a clearer fashion. Okay, so we're going to use some basic laws of logarithms. So here I'm going to write down the laws of logarithms, but if you watch the video that's linked at the top, it's going to go through some of the reasons for where those laws come from, so you can have a better understanding. But the basic laws of logarithms that we're going to use are basically based upon, as I explained in that other video, they're based upon the laws of indices. Okay, so you have the addition law, you have the multiplication law, so the, the subtraction law, and you have the power law. So the addition law, or sometimes it's called the multiplication law, is basically when you have two uh, terms which are both expressed at the same base, like for example, log to the base a of b, and you want to add to it log to the base a of c, they have the same base a, then you can write that or combine them as one logarithm, log to the base a of b times c. You can combine them together as log to the, to the same base a of the product of those two. And if it was log to the base a of b minus log to the base a of c, then you can write this as a, a quotient. You can put log to the base a of b over c, the first over the second. Okay, that's called the division or the subtraction law. Okay, and we also have um, another law of logarithms, which is called the power law, which is basically if you have for example, a times log to the base b of c, you can write this as log to the base b of c to the power of a. Okay, that becomes a power. And um, just in, in general, converting from, from index form and log form, we should know that log to the base a of b equals c can be rewritten as this is the base a, this is the power c, and this is the result uh, b. So this means a to the power of c equals b. This is the base, this is the power, this is the result. So you can rewrite things in log form, in, you know, um, from, you can change things from log form to index form and vice versa using this understanding. Okay, so these are the basic laws of logarithms that we're going to be using to, to um, solve this problem. So for six, part eight says, Given that 2 log to the base 4 of x plus 3 plus log to the base 4 of x equals log to the base 4 of 4x plus 2 plus a half, show that we end up with this expression. So what we have to do is basically convert this from log form into index form. Before we want to, we can do that, let's just try to simplify. So I'm going to, before we can actually apply these laws of addition and subtraction, we have to write this without any... Um, you know, multiple in front of it. So we have to use the power law first, like this, to change this into something of that form, so we don't have a number multiplying the logarithm. So this will be log to the base 4 of x plus 3 squared, using the power law, plus log to the base 4 of x equals log to the base 4 of 4x plus 2 plus a half. So now what I'm going to do on this side of the equation, I'm going to uh, combine these together using the multiplication law, or some, you can call it the addition law if you want. So these two are going to be combined together with a multiplication, so it's x times x plus 3, okay, squared, right? So that's that part done, and that's equal to log to the base 4 of 4x four plus 2. Now what I like to do next some people might do something slightly different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract this to, from both sides. So here I've got already log to the base 4 of x times x plus 3 squared. Okay, then I have minus log to the same base 4 of 4x plus 2. That's equal to a half. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these together using the subtraction law. So when you have log to the base of something, log to the same base, both, both of them, but you're subtracting, you can write that as a single logarithm, combining them together with division. So this will be x times x plus 3 squared over 4x plus 2 equals a half. Now, once I have combined it, this into one logarithm, all right, not separate logarithm, one single logarithm, now I can use the, the definition of logarithms. I know, as we mentioned before, log to the base a of b equals c can be rewritten as a to the power of c equals b. This is the power, this is the base, this is the power, this is the, 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 the answer. So I can do the same thing here. I can write the base is 4, a half is the power, and that will give us this, which is x times x plus 3 squared over 4x plus 2. Now what we can do is we can um, simplify this. So 4 to the power of a half is 2. So we have 2 times. Let's multiply both sides by 4x plus 2. So 2 times 4x plus 2 equals x times. Let's expand this bracket. It'll be x squared plus 6x plus 9. So when it says show that, you have to go through your steps very carefully. So now expanding the brackets on both sides, here we're going to have 8x plus 4 equals x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x. Okay, and now we want to um, rewrite it like this. Okay, so let's just keep zero on this side. You have x cubed. We've got uh, plus 6x squared. We've got 9x minus 8x, which is plus x. And we're going to have minus 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. Is that what we had to show? Exactly what I have to show. x cubed plus 6x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. So, so we can just write it there for x cubed plus 6x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. That's exactly what we had to show um, by using the laws of logarithms to rewrite this. So there's 6 part A finished. Now we're going to go on to 6 part B. Now for part B of the question, it says, given also that negative 1 is a root of this equation, use algebra to find the other two roots of this equation. Okay, so if negative 1 is a root of this equation, then what we can say is, um, we can say that, you know, if you solve this equation, you have one of the roots is x equals minus 1. That means one of the factors would be x plus 1, because, you know, you'd end up with x plus 1 equals 0 when you solve the equation. Yeah, you'd, you basically, you have three factors. One of them would be minus 1, so x plus 1 equals 0. So that means x plus 1 would be a factor. x plus 1 is a factor of the expression here. So for us to now find the other two roots, we have to know what, um, you know, multiplies x plus 1 to give us, to give us this. So we can use algebraic long division, okay? We can do x plus 1 into x cubed plus 6x squared plus x minus 4. So x into x cubed goes x squared times. x squared times x plus 1 is x cubed plus x squared. Subtract these two lines. That gives you 5x squared. Bring the next term down plus x. x into 5x squared gives you, gives you plus 5. 5x, so 5x times x plus 1 is going to be 5x squared plus 5x. When you subtract, you get negative 4x. Bring down the next term, minus 4. x into minus 4x goes to minus 4 times. You end up with minus 4x and minus 4. No remainder. So we know that these, this is definitely uh, the factor. These two together will multiply to give you this. Okay, there's no remainder. So these two multiply together. If there's no fact, there's no remainder. Therefore, they're both factors. So x squared plus 1 times x plus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. We can write it like this then, okay, because this will be the same as that, okay? Um, so if we want to find the other two roots, now we're for, we have to try to factorize this. Now, this doesn't look like it's going to factorize, okay? One of the roots is, of course, x equals minus 1. This will give us the other roots. Now, how do we find the other roots? We have to factorize. That's the first thing we try. Two numbers multiplied to give you negative 4 and add to give you plus 5. No, there's no numbers. Okay, you have to have them different signs and this product has to be 4 and this sum has to be plus 5. There's no, no way you're going to get that, right? 
So we have to try to use either the formula or completing the square. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use completing the square. So I have x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals 0. So we have x squared plus 5x equals 4. We can use the formula. That's fine as well. But I'm going to use completing the square just to practice it. So x plus 5 over 2 squared minus 25 over 4 equals 4. All right. So then I'm going to add 25 over 4 to both sides. So x plus 5 over 2 squared equals, that's 16 over 4 plus 25 over 4. So x plus 5 over 2 squared equals 16 plus 25. That's going to be 25, 35, 41. So 41 over 4. That means if I take the square root of both sides, x plus 5 over 2 is going to be plus or minus the square root of 41 over 2. Because the 4 becomes 2 when you square root it. So we have x equals minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 41 all over 2. So now we have the other roots. Those are the other two roots. So we found the other two roots. So we have x equals minus 1, x equals minus 5 plus root 41 all over 2. And you have x equals minus 5 minus root 41 over 2. Okay. And then it says, hence solve the equation, okay, um, that we had in the beginning. So basically, the x values we found are possible solutions to this. However, we must realize that the what's inside the logarithm sign can never be negative. Okay, so if I replace minus 1 in here, this is going to be negative. It can't be 0 or negative. It has to be greater than, we know that in this case, x must be greater than 0. It must be greater than 0. It can't be less than or equal to 0. It must be greater than 0. So in this case, um, well, not x, what's inside the log sign? Okay, what's inside the logarithm must be greater than 0. So in this case, x plus 3 must be greater than 0. And x must be greater than 0. And 4x plus 2, in all these cases, they have to be greater than 0 because otherwise they will have a negative or a 0 in here. Okay, so when x is minus 1, this is fine. This is not fine. Okay, and this is also not fine. So x can't be minus 1. x cannot be negative 1. When x is minus 5 plus root 41 over 2, okay, that's going to be a positive value because root 41 is more than 5, isn't it? Root 41 is 6. So six, it's, going to be, it's going to be 6 point something. So this is definitely going to be a positive value. You put a positive value of x in here and here and here, that's fine. So x equals minus 5 plus root 41 over 2. That's one of the possible solutions. Okay, that's fine. Um, and this, of course, won't be fine at all because this whole thing is going to be negative. So x cannot equal minus 5 minus root 41 over 2. Why? Because the whole thing is negative and this will become negative. So therefore, we can say the only solution, we should make it clear that it's the only solution for, for this equation is x is minus 5 plus root 41 over 2. That's the only solution. Okay, the other two we cannot take because we can't have a negative term inside the log function. All right, so that concludes question number six from the January 2024 um, paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions dealing with logarithms from P2 of um, Edexcel can be found in the playlist over here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel when you click on this link. And I'll also link you here to a video which tells you about the basics of logarithms and where some of the laws come from. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.